So, hi, and welcome back to the programming bootcamp of Gabor Savo at the website of Code Maven. And hello, Nora. I'm really happy that you're still with us in this course. Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm switching to to the screen, so you can um, I can show you a couple of things, and then you can also see the introductory slide where you can actually, if if you are, I mean, if you're new to this video now. Then I think it's better that you go back to the first video and uh, start from there, where I explain how do you get to the slides and um, all the general things. But uh, the, the, let's say the administrative things. But uh, let's cover a couple of issues here that uh, were raised or Nora asked actually, and I tried to avoid, but uh, I couldn't. So she found the issue and. Uh, I have to answer that. So one of them, there are a couple of things actually I wanted to talk about. One of them that I don't know if you noticed that when I talked about uh, the power of a number, I wasn't really sure whether it's the, is the um, whatever is carrot, is the carrot, which is like a house, or the double star. And um, I felt a little bit embarrassed that, oh, well, I'm an operator and I don't remember. And then, then I, and of you, obviously, it's in the video, it's even more like tense. Uh, but um, then I remembered that there is this meme that uh, in Twitter, for example, that people with 10, 15, and 30 years of experience showing all kinds of really, really basic things that they keep forgetting and keep have, they need to look up. So even though you have plenty of experience, and this especially, especially can happen when you're switching languages, and when you are in the parts that you are not using that, that much. I mean, I don't think that I really ever used the power of something or very rarely, so for, that, for, for example. But uh, it can be also different in different languages and uh, programming languages, I mean. And then when you are switching languages, for example, I'm switching between a couple of languages these days and uh, in one language, you have to put a semicolon at the end of each line and in Python, you don't. So I keep adding semicolons when I switch to Python. And when I switch to the other language, for example, Perl, where you need the semicolon, I keep forgetting the semicolons. Um, and then you get used to it if you do it in enough time. It's uh, probably similar to someone switching between spoken languages. They still mix, mix up things and, uh, um, and, and mess up things. So that's, that's one of the things I wanted to say. Um, the second thing that you actually found was the, the, the checking if, if something is a floating point number. So um, where was it? How, do I, how can I check if a string can be converted to a number? That was basically the, the slide. And um, the example we had is it was using is decimal and is numeric, and they were both true for. Um, an integer, and they're both false for a floating point. So I later look, and I don't really know. So I think the reason I have this example is because in previous cor previous courses, people ask me, okay, but how can you really do this? And and some people came up with this solution, which is a partial solution, which only works for integers. And then I searched again, and there's really no good way, like a built-in way, to check if a string can be converted to a floating point number. Uh, the two ways that you can do is that I mentioned, and then we can we will see it later. Is one is actually to try it, and if it fails, and it is raise an exception, and we have to catch the exception. And if there was an exception, that we know that we can't convert it. So we got something that is not convertible to a floating point. Maybe there was a letter. Maybe there were two dots. Whatever. Uh, and the other way, which is. Um, Probably also good. Uh, I think some people, at least in Python, uh, people less recommend is to use regular expressions. Uh, we can look at them uh, at that uh, as well. Uh, so we're going to look at that definitely uh, as well later on. So basically, the point is that both uh, is decimal and is numeric. Uh, you can follow now the links because I put them put your links um, that lead to the documentation that explain what is there. So basically, the is decimal checks if the old values are actual digits, so you can't have floating point number. And is numeric is, uh, if I understood correctly, because the text wasn't really clear on that, 
is actually checking if the character is some kind of a numerical character. And um, we haven't talked about it, but and <clears throat> probably you're used to the, the fact that you're using the Latin letters and um, the Arabic uh, numbers, and that's it. But uh, I mean, you speak Hungarian, so you already know a couple of these uh, Latin letters with all kinds of accents. Um, and uh, then there are Arabic and Hebrew and Chinese and what, what um, all kinds of other languages that use different characters. <clears throat> And in order to be able to uh, display all of these characters, we have something called the Unicode the definition of characters, which like every character in the world, even emojis are in, in there. So each one of them has a, a representation. And uh, there are more numeric characters in this whole area than just the 10 digits that we are used to. And uh, there, that's my understanding right now. Okay, so it's something I never really used this. I never had to uh, en encounter. Uh, I never encountered it really. Uh, but I think that's what is not numeric checks. Whether it's one of these, which can be some. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe there are some signs in the Unicode character table that representing the Roman numbers, for example. I have no idea. Okay, it's like huge, it's over sixty thousand characters. So. Okay, so that that's probably is numeric. Then there was another thing, and just keep stop me if you have, if you have more questions. There was the other thing that I said about the ternary operator, and I and I looked it up because I wasn't really sure. So the actual name of it is conditional operator. Okay, that was sort of the that's what uh, the, the name. And and I think um, I use a different word. I think I, I use compersion operators. I, I put here now um, a link. To Wikipedia is a strange link. It's a question mark and a colon because in other languages that's how it, you, it they are used: the question mark and the colon. And in Python and probably some other languages, we have this something if the condition else. So the syntax is slightly different for the th same idea of having uh, three parts uh, of the of the operator. Uh, so I think that's uh, that these are the things that I, I remembered from the, from the previous video that um, I should address. And then we stopped uh, at the end of the exercise uh, when I we covered what what were the exercises uh, that were three basically two real exercises and the third one was just asking you to find me more exercises that I can show later to other people. And uh, let's go over now the, the solutions that I have. And by the way, later on, uh, if, you, if you have any, uh, when you're doing the exercises and if you have issues, then we can discuss the, those issues that you encounter. So, because that's very uh, useful many times uh, in, in um, programming. So the one of them is the area of rectangular. So we had the, the main function, uh, we get the input. Uh, so we ask for input, the length and the weight and the width. And um, in earlier cases, I think I, I assigned the input to a variable and then later on converted them to integer. In this example, I put the call to get the call to the call to input, I put inside the call or to int. So what Python does is look, it says, okay, you have a call to the int function. Inside there is a call to the input function. So it's going to call the input function first, execute it, uh, print out the lengths, wait for me to type in something. And then when that is done, then the result will be the input of the int, int, int function without putting the, the, the actual input into some variable. It just directly gives it to int and whatever int returns, that gets into the length variable. And of course, if I type in something which can be converted to an int, then this will blow up because we don't check it. And um, that's actually another sort of side issue, uh, but it's a general programming issue, is uh, how much do you trust your users and how much do you want to make the code user-proof? User-proof is sort of means that even if you the user makes mistakes, mistakes by the um, Make, gives you incorrect input, or either by mistake or because they want to check whether your system is is working, um, and then you have to decide whether 
how much you want to in invest in, in, in your code to, ev to avoid making a mess in this case, blowing up your program. And if, uh, if you write this program, especially for yourself or a couple of other people that you can say, okay, worst case, they make a mess and then they figure it out. Um, then you invest less in this. If you give it to some other people, then you would definitely, you will probably want to invest more of your time so they won't get in trouble and they won't complain that, oh, I, you asked me for an integer, I gave something else and it didn't work. And that's, then, then they're blaming you, even though you told them what to do. And so, but that's an that's a interesting issue. And then of course, there can be all kinds of security issues of uh, checking what, whatever you get input so it won't uh, break your program in a way that actually might have security uh, implications. Um, well, it's especially important when you get data from the outside world, not so much your own thing. So anyway, you got, we got the length and the width, and then here we can check, uh, well, I, I think I didn't teach this, but uh, uh, you could look it up. Uh, you can compare the length with the less than operator to zero, and then print out the, uh, okay, there are a couple of things that I didn't teach here, I see now, but it's a good, but uh, we can go over now uh, there. So one of them is the less than operator, uh, and so I check whether the uh, result is, uh, whether the length is less than zero, less than or less or equal than zero. And if, if that's the case, then I print out the links, the length must be positive or is not positive. And then I call return. So this return will basically tell Python to terminate this function and then execute whatever comes here. So in case there was something, it would be executed. Okay, in our special case, because there's nothing else after the main, it will also immediately exit the program. Okay, but uh, I mentioned uh, the exit function that we call, that we showed in the, that we saw in the, especially in the interactive shell, where you can tell the program just to stop the whole execution and exit from the program. That's different because that exit would, would exit no matter what. This one just returns from the current function. So if you have functions inside functions, then this just terminates the current function earlier than reaching the end of the, the code. Okay. Um, and then, then we have this other condition checking whether the this is uh, less than zero, less or equal than zero. And again, if that's the case, then I return. And uh, then if they were both false, so they were both positive numbers, then I can, uh, then I multiply and print out the results. Okay. So this, you could have sold and maybe I should have a solution here with all the, without all these extra uh, tools. Um, so I'll have to write it down and remember it for next time. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's just for, the, below here, there's just a, a version in Python 2 is row input, but basically the same code. So actually you can just peek a little bit. The, the only for the difference is that we have row input here. And then I imported the print function from the future, just so I can have it in parentheses. So this is a Python 2 solution. It doesn't really matter, hopefully. I left it here because when I originally created these exercises and, and solutions, I was still teaching only Python 2. And so I left, left the exercise, that sol solution here. Uh, the next one was the calculator. Uh, it's, uh, so this is like the, the solution that I came up with. In this time, uh, the input was converted to using float. Okay, so I'm expecting some floating point number here. It's um, in the end up to you what you decide, how, what, what you expect, what, what kind of values you accept uh, from the user. So the first one, I get the a number, then I ask for another number, goes floating point, and then I get an operator. So I ask the user to get, give me an operator, which is asked one of these. I print it out to be nice to the user, so the user will, be, will know what are the choices. Okay, that's the, the whole story here. This one, I don't convert to anything because I just need the string. And then in the code, I have these basically if statement with lots of elifs. 
So I say, if it's a plus, then just add, the, add them. If it's a minus, just uh, destruct them and multiply and divide, okay? And, and I have no real choice here, just write all these things down. And if none of them is matching, then I can print out that's an invalid operator. And here I have another thing that uh, I haven't taught yet, uh, but that's actually, I'm going to at one point, uh, but it's a very useful thing that when you are creating a new string, uh, instead of concatenating parts, you could use this uh, pair of curly braces as a placeholder for something. And then you can say dot format and give it a variable. And then this variable will, the content of this variable will be inserted here instead of this placeholder. So if I run this program now, let's say a basic calculator pi. So calculator pi. So it asks me two, three, and then let's say I give it an exclamation mark. So it said invalid operator, and then in two, between two quotes, it puts, me, it puts the exclamation mark. So these are the two single quotes here, okay? Uh, but with the, so the first thing that I'm showing now is that this, this OP gets into the, instead of the pair of curly braces, okay? And you might ask me, why do we have this extra single uh, uh, quotes there? And I'll show you uh, something that I wasted hours in one, at one client. So what happens so with something similar? So what happens if you type in this? So what I did now, I typed in plus and then a space, and then I, print, I pressed enter, okay? So the, the conversion failed because it wasn't just an exact plus, uh, but, and now in the output, I see the plus and the space. Now, what happened if I edit this program? What happens if I edit this program? Where is my editor? And just, this is the calculator pi, okay? So what happens if I, um, calculator, if I edit this program and remove this, uh, uh, single uh, quotes from the from the output. It's it's nothing really. It's just making the output look uh, nicer. So now I do the same two three and then I stay plus and the space and enter. And now it says invalid operator plus. And if you see this, you will spend three hours trying to figure out why the plus is not accepted because you don't see the extra space in, in this error message. Okay. So that's uh, one, uh, nothing to do with Python actually, just in the generic programming uh, recommendation that you have when you have uh, all kind of values that you want to print out, especially in error messages, put them inside some, some signs. So you will, the person who is seeing the message will see the limits of that value and won't miss the extra, extra spaces that, that you might have there. Because that's, I mean, it's such a waste of time, really, uh, running after this and then looking at the code and saying, but this plus should be accepted and why not? Okay, so that's it. And then print. And here I just, I have the return here, as, as you can see. Um, this is actually not necessary, this last return because we will fall out of the, the main function anyway. Some people recommend it because it makes it explicit, but doesn't really, uh, I mean, at the end of a function, it, I usually don't put that, it, it there. Um, okay, so any questions here with the, with the calculator? Okay, so- no, I think this is okay. Okay, people, I don't know if you did this whole exercise like this, but uh, people usually re are really, really lazy and they don't want to do this. And they say, okay, why? I, and, it, and it's sort of logical that they say, okay, why can't I just accept two plus three and tell Python just do the calculation? And, uh, and it's a funny thing because in many other languages like in C and Java, you, you really couldn't do this. But in Python, you could actually do this. Okay, and uh, Okay, so sorry, this is just the Python 2x uh, solution, doesn't matter. Um, 
And I don't know there is the other solution now. I don't have the other solution. Maybe I left it for the next uh, part. So, okay, for, forget that what I just said about the easier way. We're going to get there uh, in the next uh, few minutes, actually. But now we have a couple of more slides and then we get actually the same exercises to be solved in a slightly different manner. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk about the command line arguments. So when you type in, um, when we type in here Python, just Python, that's, the, that's our command. And we gave it a command line argument like minus V or minus capital V. Or we also gave it minus C and uh, some print 42, 43 came out. Okay, doesn't matter. These are parameters that we give on the command line to the Python program. So we get, basically we tell the Python pro, the python.exe in our case, we tell it to behave here dif slightly differently according to what kind of input that we give. But this is very different from the other input that we saw. The other input would work the way that you start the program and then the program asks you something and waits till you type in the answer. This one, you have to decide on the, the values beforehand, give them all here on the, on the command line, and then the program will just somehow collect them and work with them. Now we are talking, talking about the Python program here. The same, for example, you remember we had the, the deer of the operating system that would list me all the content of the file system, or the, of this current directory. But this could also get, I could also give it to, let's say, C uh, backslash. And now it gave a, it got a parameter on the command line. So now the dir command works on the C colon backslash directory. So this is the root directory of my whole file system. So I can give, in a way, input parameters. I can give parameters to the program on the command line. So this is what we call the command line, okay? The same way when we write, run a Python program, okay, where is my Python program, sorry. It's called CLIPy, Python CLIPy. The same way here I can give, I can write stuff here. And this could be the input of my CLI.py. So I could put here, for example, uh, minus V. Okay, uh, and uh, sort of the user would probably expect that the cli.py will understand what this minus v means. Okay, why is the, why can it be interesting for you? For example, you write a program that works on an Excel file. It needs to get an Excel file. You basically have to, and you want to, you want this program to work on any Excel file you give you. I mean. In, in, a, in a specific format, but you just, you don't want to specify the name of the file in your code. Okay, so you get a, a file. So how do you do, how can you tell your program what is the name of the file? One way is that the prog you run the program, the program asks you, and then you type in the name, which is okay, but uh, probably a much better way to give the name here. And why is it better? Because if I give it a name here, a, B, C dot, whatever, XLS, I think, Excel file, and I run it, and then it works. And um, let's say it does something now. Now it just gives me an error message, don't worry about that. But now I can uh, click on the up arrow, because it's I'm on the command line. I go back the same command, and I, let's say I can uh, correct the file name or give some other uh, parameters. If this was an interactive program that asked me, then I would have would need to type in again and again the same file. And as long as it's a file with three characters, that's not a big issue. Once you have files with long passes, you don't want to type them and make a typo every time. It's much better that to use a command line and use this history feature of the command line that you can get back. And I can go back here, all the history that I typed in, I don't know how long, okay? So that's one, one of the things. So 
that's that's the motivation why to get the command line arguments so okay i mean i could run any program and type in stuff there i can do that the question the more interesting question is how can the program know how can my program know that someone typed in something okay and for that uh, the sys module has an attribute an attribute called rv that we actually saw for for really short time uh, earlier. Uh, so we have the sysrv, which contains whatever the user typed in on the command line, no matter what. So here I type in, let's say, CLI, one, two, three, not good. Let's not use uh, apple, banana, peach, carrot, whatever, okay? So I just type in four words for here, and I didn't want to use the numbers because then I get confused with the location. Okay, so now I run this, or the explanation gets confused. So I run this, and this is the output. So the first line, what we see is the content of, of sysrg. I switch back to the, to the screen. So this is sysrg. This is the content of sysrg. What can I see here? The name of my program, that's, the first thing that we can see, then all the, okay, there is a typo in banana, okay, whatever. So there, uh, the, the birds that I gave it, okay? So this is the, this is the list of, of values, okay? And uh, this way, I mean, if, if I say sysrv, I can access the whole list. If I say sysrv zero, then it will give me the first element. And now you might ask why zero is the first is because in programming, everything starts from a zero. But I mean, it's the same as elevators in the end, right? Elevator stuff starts from floor zero, floor zero or buildings start from floor zero. We just don't talk about them usually. We just start speaking of floor, first floor, second floor, but there is a zeros floor there as well. So anyway, in programming, um, everything basically every counting usually starts from zero and whether it's good or not for programmers we, we got used to it okay so so the first element is called element zero or index zero and then then i printed out sysrv in the first place or sorry is sysrv in index one is index one and this is the second value from this list apple and then element uh, index two, which is the third place, this beautiful banana. Okay, so whatever. And uh, in this program, I didn't, act, didn't try to access the third and the fourth, and, and so I don't see those printed out. Okay, um, but basically that's how you can access the, the element, the, the values that were given on the command line. Now, what happens if, uh, I actually wanted to give the first parameter, uh, not uh, apple, let's fix this banana. banana, okay. But instead of apple, I wanted to give it apple pie. So if I, okay, so now I type it apple pie and I run it again, and the first element is still just apple and uh, second element is now pie. So how do you think I could tell it that as apple pie is actually the first element? maybe put it um in parent not parentheses um quotes quotes yeah yeah so here i put them in double quotes and then suddenly apple pie is the first element and the new banana is the is the second element in this uh, or element one and element two, index one index two okay um Right, the same way, I, by the way, I can put here as well. So I could put uh, these, let's say, in quote, and now I have all those as a single element. Uh, I could try putting single quotes here, and uh, well, it doesn't really work, okay? That's Windows. Uh, on Linux, uh, you would normally use single quotes instead of the double quotes on Linux or Mac, okay? That's, and, and these, the, these, these double quotes doesn't, so it's nothing to do with Python, okay? Because it's just how Python receives the, the data. So Python doesn't know about these quotes here, okay? It's only my operating system. 
and then my operating system gives Python, my Python program, the strings that these are the pieces that were on the on the command line. Okay, so so that's that's uh, that's how you can get the command line. Now, what happens if I have if I remove all this and run run the program? This is what we, we saw when I ran it first time. So what happens here? At first, it prints out the sysargv, which now contains CLI and the, the, the name of the file and the first parameter. Then I print out the, the ones, the, the name of the file and then the apple pie. And then I get an exception. It says index error, list index out of range. Okay, because what happened is that I try to access sysargv in index two, but it wasn't there. So the index, this is called the index, the, the, the numbers here, were out of range. That's basically says. So the this uh, the sysargv is actually called a list object in Python. I think I mentioned that there are these list objects and dictionaries and things. So this is a list object, something that has uh, a list of values. In this case, these, these are the values that we got from the command line. So sysrv uh, in, in the second place, now I couldn't access because it, the list was out of range. Okay, so of course this can happen if you access something that, that's not there and that this is error. So the question here now, how could you avoid it? I think the, the slides here just show what I just showed you. Yeah, exactly. The, the examples that I showed you, they are also in, in the slide more or less. So the question, how can we, how could we avoid this? Any idea? The exception. Mm, maybe with a conditional clause, conditional, like an, an if, write an if. If of what? Uh, like say that if there is such a thing, then print it. Right, but how can you know that there is, so if you don't access. I don't know, don't yeah. know. Maybe I, I thought there would might be a function for it. Yeah, yeah, so there, uh, actually, in dictionaries, I think there is. I think in lists there isn't, um, mm -hmm. probably. Um, uh, but there is a function called len, and len can give me the length of uh, the the list. So how many elements are in there? So I can use the sysrv just to print it out, and the len sysrv. And if I run this, and it's called cli len. Let's try this cli len, it uh, prints out that I have two elements in there. So now based on this, I can have some if condition and knowing, okay, I can only access element zero and element one. And if I have here the carrot, then uh, now I have three elements. And if I don't have any, any parameters, then I have one element, which is the name of it's my own name, my, the name of my program. And then I can combine this with, uh, with an if statement. And later on, when we learn loops, then we can also just loop over the elements, uh, all kind of uh, things. And then even later, we'll find a much better way to access the command line parameters. Because this is really a, a rather low level way of accessing command line parameters. It's, use, it's quite useful for now and for simple programs, but for more complex programs, you will want uh, a much more powerful tool to, to access them. Uh, yeah, and, and just remember something with all this uh, uh, discussion that, so we are learning Python here. And this course is, uh, if I expect to, to take, I don't know, 15 hours of actually lecture or maybe even more, and a lot more practice time, and, but this is only a small fraction of the language. The language itself is huge and it has, well, let me, let me check this now. So there is this website called pypi.org where you have all the third party extensions of Python. It says there are 256,000. Okay, so I just try, trying to put you uh, in, in this whole learning thing in, in, in context. So it's huge. Obviously no one can know all these things. Uh, very few people even know the whole language of Python, the whole Python language itself. Uh, partially because there are esoteric things that 
usually you don't need, uh, in, even in the language. Uh, so just keep in mind that uh, we are in a long, long learning curve and we can always improve in this. Um, that's, um, that's a nice thing. And I think there is this, this is the last slide before the, the exercises here. Um, here we use the command line arguments and then we exit if ca in case we didn't get enough or the right amount of parameters. So the, the, the okay, so the, the font is a, really, little, a little bit strange here in this because this L might seem to be a capital L. Now that I'm looking at it, it's a lowercase L, okay? Just to make, make it uh, clear. So here I'm checking if the sysrv is different from two. Okay, so equal equal would check whether they are equal. Uh, the exclamation mark equal checks whether the two sides are not equal. So I'm checking if it's different from two. And if it different and if it is different from two, then I say, okay, just exit the program. So I call this exit function that we saw and give, give the exit function some string. Now this string, this, this can't accept commas like print. This, this accepts only a single string. Uh, so I have to put them together with the plus sign. What the string says, uh, let's, let, actually let's run this to CLI exit so we can see it. Okay, where is it? CLI exit. So if I run this now without any parameters, then this is the output I get. Usage, name of the program, and the word value in capital letters. And this sort of, I think, a quite accepted way to try to tell the user what you're actually expecting. So you say, this is the usage of my program. This is how you use the program. You type in the name of the program, okay? And then you give some value. Now, of course, with, another pro pro with your program, you might say here, Excel file including whatever data. And you would put in a capital letter. So this gives, gives, give, this gives a clue to the person who's running this. Okay, this is how I need to run it. And um, the same thing happens if I get one, whatever, apple, buy. Okay, I run this way. Again, it complains because now this time we have one, two, three parameters. So in CSRV, three things. And we wanted exactly two. So what happens if I, if I run it? Then it says, hello, apple. Okay, whatever. So this is what, what it does. It checks. So this is the, 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 the string. So I have just text usage and then I combine it with the CCRV0, which is always my own name, and then just add this again some string, which is hopefully some good explanation and the whole exit. And I'm using his CCRV0 and not just type in CLI exit. So if someone comes and renames the, the program, it still says the right name and not the old name, which happened to many people who just type in the name of their own program. Okay, so there is now an interesting thing here that I still want would, would like to show before we get to the exercises. So now if I run this program, uh, it runs and it, this, this one actually gives some output. But how could I actually know that this program ran correctly? And each program in both Windows and Linux and Macs and every, in every operating system has something called an exit code. Windows, they usually call whatever it was the name. In Windows, they call it error level. But this is basically a number that indicates if the program was successful, if, if it ran successfully, or it uh, failed in some way. And in, these, um, in this exit code, or in, in, in Windows, they call it error level, this is zero in case of success, and some other number in case of failure. And then each program indicates, uh, different number indicate different uh, error issues. Uh, that doesn't matter, that's even uh, specific to each program, or can be specific to each program, that's not, interesting. What is interesting right now is whether it was successful or not. So in Windows, I could now say echo, and this is a command of Windows again, and percentage size, sign, error, level, percentage sign. And now it says it's zero. 
because my program, the previous program, so it is the last program that I executed on the command line. Now, if I run this program again, my Python program and Apple, and I give it Apple Pie, it prints out this usage message. And what happened to the error level? The error level is now one because my program actually exited using the exit function, which got a string. So I could give the exit function either a string and then the, this number, then the string is printed and the exit code is one, or I could give it a number if I wanted. So I could explicitly say exit seven and then the error level would be seven. It's, at this point is not very interesting, uh, very, I mean, you don't need to use this uh, at this point, but sometimes people ask me about this in, in, in various courses. Um, in Linux, it's uh, instead of this, uh, so this is what you do in Windows, and this is what you would use in Linux or Mac, the dollar question mark. So the command, the, the command echo is the same to print out something on the screen, uh, just the, ne the, the variable where it's stored is called different in Windows and on Unix like operating system, so Mac and, and, uh, and uh, Linux. And uh, um, I don't know if you've heard, there is something called the continuous integration systems. Um, the point there, well, for programmers especially, it's, it's extremely important. Uh, I think for everyone who writes program, but uh, I would be happy if programmers would use it all the time. So the idea there is that you, you check your program all the time as you develop, uh, making sure that you didn't break anything that was working earlier. And there's a whole story for this, but uh, one of the things they do is they run your program and they look at the exit code. If this was successful, okay, if it wasn't successful, they report it to you. Um, but actually something else that actually is going to be useful. So when you write programs, what, you, what will happen is that you write one program that let's say can deal with an Excel file. And then you write and you're really happy. And then it has some output. And then you write some other program that takes that output and makes some other changes. So now you have two programs that one needs to run after the other. And slowly you will accumulate programs. Maybe you have a, a program that is connected to some device that you, you didn't even wrote the, write the program. You just have to run it. So now you're going to write a new program that runs these programs, okay? And how can this control program know that these individual programs were successful? It could look at the exit code, okay, or error level. Okay, so that's, that's the reason it will be useful even for you because you, that's, that's what, in the end, that's what they do a lot in, in labs that you have all these control programs and then you yeah, combine them with some other program. And then you have programs, running programs, running programs. Okay, so the exercise now is basically doing the same things that you did earlier. So the rectangular and then the calculator. But this time, instead of getting the input from the user by asking the user, expect the user to run the program like this. So getting the parameters from the command line. So the internal parts of the program going to be different. They're going to be the same. The input is coming from the, from the different place. Okay, so these are the two exercises. And then we are now going for a break so you can do the exercises and then the gum, the, um, and then Zoom can save itself, <laughs> the video, and then when we come back, we continue with the, with the next chapter. Okay, a any questions, by the way, before that? No, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, great. So thank you again uh, for watching and I'm looking for the button here to stop it.